You're a prisoner in a Russian prison, and I think it was a work camp, the toughest kind. Uh, something about trace amounts of, you know, cannabis or something. Brittany Griner is released. She's home, and she wants to play ball again. She's ready. She's ready to play ball. And let's remember why she went to Russia. She went to Russia because they don't make enough money here based on their talents to support themselves. So after a harrowing year, Ms. Griner finally returning to the court. But she's going to take a pay cut to do it after nine months of wrongful detainment in Russia. And that prisoner swap, ESPN is reporting she signed a one year contract with her team, the Phoenix Mercury. Sounds wonderful, right? We want to see her back in action. She is a fantastic player. But according to Business Insider, Griner's $165,100 contract is a 32% drop from what she could have been offered last season, which she accepted, right? So she had the deal. And then, unfortunately, uh, you know what happened? She got detained in Russia. She accepts that deal last year so the team could re sign Diana Tarazi. The WNBA's all time leading scorer. She's a game changer and impact player, nothing against her. Griner, a two time Olympic gold medalist, six time WNBA All Star, had been making close to the max possible salary for three seasons prior to her detainment, eligible for a $234,936 super max this season. And that's the super max in the WNBA. Well, it's notable for Griner to take a pay cut in order to bolster her team's roster. It's obviously points to a larger issue with the WNBA. According to just women's sports, Griner is only one of a handful of pro women's basketball players that are taking pay cuts this year to boost their team's talent or create what is colloquially known as a super team. This is how they get there. In this economy, it makes sense that even all star athletes have to bite the bullet when it comes to financial negotiations. But for what it's worth, the WNBA's league salary cap this year, 17 million. NBA's league cap sits at a cool 134 million. WNBA has long been trying to gain pay parity with their male counterparts, incremental success, inching them closer. And we do mean inching 2020. WNBA signed a contract with the players union that offered a pay increase, fully paid maternity leave. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> and a revenue split between the teams and the association, of course, still a very long way to go. So there's just so much to unpack here. She's doing what is somewhat normal, Francesca Wright, in the league. I take a dip here, hopefully I'll get it back at some point so I can keep this super team together. I but mean, <laughs> I mean, really? Diana Tarazi is not the one who was held over in Russia. It's insane to me because, and I know you might think it's callous to capitalize on the fact that you were in a literal Russian prison, maybe a work camp, a work camp, you know, to then be like, Hey, come back to the states. Maybe um, your star is risen. There's some sponsorship deals. You're kind of a you know a big a big deal. You're gonna get interviewed. Like you would imagine there would be if if this were Steph Curry, he's coming back to the states even more of a hero than he already yeah. is, right? Like so so that's number one. Um, and number two, look, the, the, can we talk about the like the it, let's talk about a lack of parity. The average salary for the NBA. Is nine million. You're talking. Le- you're talking a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year less than. And have you ever seen like NBA players be like, well, in order to get Clay Thompson like back on the team, you're gonna have to take a cut. Is that cool, Steph? You are we gonna do this, Warriors? Like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. No, nobody does that. You use it to bargain against one another. You and your agents, you know, are are obviously in bidding wars. And if not, you go to another team. And it's just more broadly the lack of investment in women's sports in this country for all that the right 
yammers about how much they care about women's sports. Mm. We know it's BS, we know it's just anti-trans crap. And we know that they really don't care about women's sports. And if they did, there would be those deals. A lot of, a lot of, look, they're they're discuss, they're dirty capitalists, right? They're like, well, but nobody watches it. Why does no one watch it? Because you're not sponsoring it, because you're not airing it, because you're not licensing it, because you're not putting these players in our faces. And that if you are. did, if you treated them equally to men, you're damn right people are gonna watch and follow. Yeah, I think you're <laughs> bravo. And and here's the thing, Francesca. They have a good fan base, okay? My yeah. dad lives out there, uh, my stepmom, they go to the games. They, but there's people who travel with the team. This uh, WNBA team is loved. But now that she's back, don't don't you think that there's gonna be even more people? Raise the ticket prices. You know, I read where Deion Sanders took over for the you know University of Colorado, I believe mm -hmm. it is, correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong. And already even for spring practices, scrimmages, whatever, they're seeing an increase, okay? And people and fans who are buying tickets and the like. You're right. If it were my agent, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any problem. I'd say, look, when you sell this deal, lead with the work camp. Let's start right. there. Lead <laughs> with that. Play on their sympathies because I deserve it. I'm the only one that was over there detained in a political pawn, right? Yep. And you're right about Deion Sanders and Colorado head coach. Prime memory, I. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it's incredible to me, and and I I really hope I'm glad they're unionizing. I think that's really important. Look, it's uh, it is it's no industry is safe from this push from workers and WNBA players are are again part of that. What we hope I think is like a revolution in how we're treating people who put in the work. Yeah, and you mentioned the right because the other thing I thought about was, listen. $165,000 is nothing to sneeze at, that's good money. But we're talking about relative to the game and the talent. Some people believe that the NBA players who have been supportive of the women need to speak up, do more, even break off some of their money, who knows? I don't know how you feel about that, I'll give you a last word before the break. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think I think you're right, I think that Look, it isn't nothing is nothing to sneeze at, but like again, we have to look same thing with the in Hollywood, right? Yeah, Angelina Jolie makes millions and millions and millions, but if if Ryan Gosling is making three times as much, we should probably search for parity, and we and 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 ultimately, like, no one needs to be making that much money. That's my final. <laughs> <laughs> Spread the wealth is what you're really saying. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. yeah, well, I agree.